Hey you guys, welcome back to Southern Latitudes. I'm Robin and I garden in a half acre in East Central Florida and today is garden tour day. Now last month we did nothing but fruit trees, berries, vines, things like that nature. This month I have another very specific goal uh, focus for you guys and it's gonna be mostly trees but new things also new things that have happened because I I've been a little bit um, distracted a little lots going on and I just want to update you on a whole bunch of things on all different areas of the garden so I, I like to start many times over here with the Barbados cherry tree and uh, I just wanted to make one quick note before we move on that um, this tree got a severe prune um, a very good thorough cleaning out um, I think it was around November December of last year and uh, so I've noticed something very new it it doesn't mind the smaller prunes but it, it did not like this super cleaned out as you can see it's very thick and dense in there probably not the best for airflow I might need to go through there's a lot of spiders in here and I might need to do something like this and um, and allow for some extra airflow to go through although the hurricanes are gonna do a lot too uh, it does have a couple suckers uh, that need to be removed now um, but it's very slow to put on various blooms there's its blooms and uh, I have eaten a couple pieces of fruit that were early on and now we seem to have stalled a little bit but overall I just wanted to tell you that's what's going on it, it came back very thick and lush it's doing great but just very slow to bloom and um, and that's okay but it's just something to make note of for future years that perhaps I shouldn't quite take it it, it was probably about nine or ten feet um, some of these whips were like well over six seven feet uh, from the trunk and and I think I, I pruned it to get it off of the fences and make it easier access to this gate over here so I I think while it does my goal was to make it easier for me to grab the fruit but in turn I don't know it just seems like maybe the tree is not liking what I would say is a, a good thorough and heavy prune um, I didn't prune it to the ground. It's not that heavy, but still I don't know. I don't know that I like What's going on here and um, in this dense You know growth on the leaves I although you know I hate to remove some of it look there's where my buds are too So I guess I would just be real careful. I don't know It seems like gardening is always an experiment so a uh, thing number two that I wanted to show you and show off is that um, before I turn it on for the day is we got a whole new pool pump and uh, the filter and the egg part, you know, a filtration system. And um, that was a long time coming. We had been having issues all spring with keeping our pool nice and blue. And there was leaks. It was springing leaks in the side of the the housing unit and it was just time to um, get oh, buddy heard some car door it's just time to address that and uh, when we went uh, off on Jack's business trip in the panhandle um, I left the pool off and when I came back to turn it on it never turned back on so anyhow that was a pretty dollar spent um, getting that fixed but that's good and then we have also decided that this winter uh, our big project will be to reroute and redo a lot of this area <laughs> he's funny um, so you know some this is just a little temporary walkway until we were going to put something over so Jack is going to pull up a lot of this we're going to end up building a lot of uh, wood over to this area all the way to under the pool and just make that safer for the grandbabies because everybody wants this Father's Day everybody wanted to jump off the deck into the pool and um, you know we always had to worry about a little one falling down in there and so this will be all revamped this whole garden 
Uh, they make some beautiful bamboo six foot um, privacy. So I will probably put one or two of those panels in here, maybe three, I don't know. But that'll just give us a little extra privacy, block off the pool from, you know, uh, I have a Wilson scenario where he pops his head up over here all the time. So, uh, and that was part of the inspiration for growing out this little pool garden and just getting some taller things and give me some privacy. So, uh, you know, a six foot bamboo thing, you know, a little privacy um, hedge will kind of help do that. And just kind of say, this is our little tropical space and privacy. We're still trying, I think, um, I have, I'll show you the little papayas, but I think we're gonna put the papayas in here and move this box. Just a lot of reworking of this area uh, to just to make it like our little oasis. So uh, over here are our, um, these are dwarf Cavendish bananas and uh, the squirrels ended up getting this one down here. I've already cut it and removed it. I've cleaned up a lot of these trees. Um, this, when I quit feeding the squirrels over here because I couldn't tote the heavy bags of bird feed, uh, the squirrels took it out on me and ate all the bananas on that rack. So that is what it is. It's not the worst thing in the world. They weren't the prettiest bananas. We've got other bananas coming. And so that's the update this month on that banana area. We have um, right here our old chicken coop area. Uh, this was just recently highlighted in a video called My Chickens Pooped Out My Dinner. And um, while the plants are still going good and the tomatillas are really strong in there, I will say that the, the, a lot of the tomatoes are starting to fizzle out their blooms. So it is good, all the sunflowers, I mean, it's good other than that. We got a bonus bunch of t tomatoes, excuse me, in this area. And I've made tomatilla uh, salsa and oh, all that's good. Um, the the uh, sunflowers are gone completely. I have saved the seeds there. The heads are in the, my she shed and the growing well, er, drying out well there, sorry. I've lost my, I've become distracted a little bit. Sorry, I'll try to get back on point. Uh, we have pulled four different watermelons out of this area. These are the sugar baby watermelons. And uh, this one looks really good right here. I have one right under my feet, also growing well. Now they're, um, according to, um, wherever I bought I know Haas sells these so I was looking on their website but I'm not sure that's where the original seed came from so they were originally um, supposed to be like 10 to 12 pounds now mine were 8 to 9 pounds and these sort of later ones have they I think they were just under 8 7 and something um, or around 7 pounds and that's okay with me it's nice that's like a you know, one day or weekend type size. And that was perfect. We've made watermelon sorbet for Father's Day. That was really good. That was a big hit, especially with the kids, grandbabies. Um, I have, ooh, so many, many more babies in here. Um, there's like three different babies in there. I thought they were about to expire, but this explosion of rain that we've had has really uh, reinvigorated this whole um, I think there were seven vines in here and uh, this tomatilla is doing great these cherry tomatoes never really set a, a single piece of fruit and I may just rip it out just because it's just kind of ugly it's not doing anything for me makes me wonder what kind of tomato that was it might have been a large tomato but it sprawled almost like an Everglades but an Everglades would be producing if that was an Everglades Okay, back over here is uh, a roselle, and I don't know what kind of roselle it was. It is not light dependent, and so it didn't wait for fall to put on its uh, fruit, but I've already picked it, and I've been dehydrating that today and yesterday. Um, so, you know, that is actually kind of nice before hurricane season ever got here. I've already made a pretty good harvest of my roselle. 
and I had Roselle tea with spearmint tea this morning. These are my um, Black Runner Scarlet Beans. Scarlet Runner Beans. I'm sorry, that, that's probably the better name. Um, yeah, so, but I don't see any beans on them. Is that typical? <laughs> I've forgotten. Uh, this cattle panel wants to really fall and bend. But in here are uh, different cherry tomatoes. I did grab a few big tomatoes. These were just what was left over in the tray. I had a little space after I cleared off this uh, cucumber cattle panel. And um, so it's given me a little bit extra, but I'm also ready to rip this out. I am thinking of, believe it or not, um, I put the, the exterior perimeter fence around this whole area because we were going to take down the coop and I didn't want anybody to encroach in on my house garden. And uh, now that that is completely down, um, we have a whole video on when we took down this coop, um, which it came with the property originally and it was quite old. But anyhow, uh, I took the, the fencing for that, put it around this garden to protect it. And now I'm thinking, um, at least for right now, this, that, gar <laughs> that fence can go. And, um, and I need access to both sides. I want to get this cattle panel out. Eventually, I want to get the cattle panel with the Scarlet Runner beans out of here. And, whew, I've been talking fast. Uh, I believe... We're also going to take down this shed. Uh, Jack asked if I want to do it right now. No, I don't want to do it in summer. Let's wait till about October. So that is ready to go. Uh, I'm using the summer to get the things out of the interior of it. Um, but I may see drip irrigation kind of the main line goes down here. And then I have lines going this way, uh, which is east west. And I am wondering if I should while we revamp this garden uh, and reset it for fall, if I should just run a main line here and then put my drip line this way. I don't know, I'm still playing with that and toying with that idea. And um, so that's an update for you on that. With all the rain, I have just, I, I don't know what's going on with asparagus that usually wants to pop out in March and April, but we were in that drought. And I think it's been holding all that energy. And so I have been getting a lot of asparagus. Not always big ones, but I'm getting a ton of asparagus. The Jabotacaba, which is right next to the asparagus bed, um, got mad, dropped every one of its leaves. I did not allow it to be in any of the videos. I didn't discuss it or anything. And it put on a whole new flush of leaves and so that's what you're seeing right here they're just going from red back um to green and they some of them want to come back right some don't i don't know what's going on <laughs> it's the most unhappy jipotacaba but it won't die either and i thought about moving it but that's what it lost all of its leaves and decided to come back um i don't know what to to make of it we're just letting it go my apple blossoms have decided to come back too. I've been hand pollinating them whenever that happens. And I think we finally have one that is taken. Last year at this time, I just got like a Facebook memory. I had four apples right here. Oh no, I had it on the bite me. This main tree is actually a Devonshire Corridon, but it does have a few grafts on it. So the apple that you see up here is a granny smith apple and it looks like it is doing very well you can see the other little ones kind of next to it i hope you can see that anyhow these are coming off because they weren't pollinated but this one is much stronger so that's how i know that apple has been pollinated and fruiting and then you see here some more that didn't now this one's very yellow right here sorry um, but this one looks strong. This one might have also taken. I'm not sure. So if that happens, those would be the first ones of the year to actually take. And that would be so cool to have Granny Smith, the first of 2024. So back here, not much else is uh, new. I've pulled the cattle panels, um, except for the one that has the peppers on it. But I pulled all the tomato ones, 
got all that out. Every time I clean the chicken coop, all of that um, shavings and poo and all that stuff is going in there. It's going to sit for the next uh, three months maybe and just keep going ahead and being amended and amended and then we'll put onions in the back. We'll keep peppers here in the front for now. I'm pretty certain, well, I don't know. I'm hoping that they should make it through all summer, especially with the investment in the shade cloth up here. But, you know, we'll just wait and see. I haven't really planned out where things are going in the fall garden. I just only planned out where the onions are going. Um, since you last saw the African foxglove video, these guys have gone, the bigger ones were like about here, and they have more than doubled in size. And um, I'm about to see more blooms coming out. It's pretty cool. So these guys really responded well to the extra dirt and soil and place to put their roots down and um i think i'm gonna find a home for these here soon i did lose one um the papayas these are the ones that are gonna go over by the pool um kind of to hopefully block my neighbor's window i do like those neighbors but you know i'm sure we would all like some privacy <laughs> from um, us in the pool so one of the biggest things I do want to talk to you guys about are these trees these pines that are over my head can you see them this big one they're everywhere <laughs> try not to make you dizzy but there's a lot of pines over my head and for uh, four five years um, yeah, the end of 2018, the beginning of 2019, I have been developing this side lot from, uh, it was almost like a rainforest in here, couldn't see the neighbors. We removed 40 palm trees across um, the both lots, but most of it, 35 of them were over here. And, you know, just vines and everything. And um, long story short, we have these pines and I work, I say it like in a lot of videos, I try to work around the wind because if the wind's out, my life is at risk underneath these pine trees. And they're beautiful. Um, you know, they are my overstory. I'm kind of happy that they are overstory. Uh, but I do have like, there's an oak back there. I have two oaks in front of me. And, um, and what's, one of them is getting close to the power line so we have to go ahead and it, it's our responsibilities from the transformer to the house so uh, you know we just started calling the tree guys i've been telling you about that and we noticed we were getting better and better prices and i think uh the tree people are really hungry for work right now because you know tree trimming is expensive and it was you know if you're fighting inflation and other things in this economy it's probably something you're going to easily say, I'll try it myself, or let's just put it off for as long as possible. And we certainly have been doing that all this year. But um, so we got to calling, huh, I don't know, seven, eight tree people. Uh, I think three have already been out. Two are coming on Saturday and phone tag with like one more and the rest just have there's a oh, one did call me back and he's booked out for two months so um as much as i really liked him we met uh, him and his wife at a dinner party uh at a friend's birthday party but anyhow um i would love to use him but we we couldn't and then there's just some obviously out of our price bracket but um as we started getting quotes for the oaks and trimming we started saying, okay, well, how about, you know, like, um, let's see if I can find it. It's like this little, there's a little spindly pine here. Let me get out of the camera view. Okay, so right here. Yes, the middle one right there. Well, to the left. Boy, oh boy, that one is so spindly. And this makes me so nervous. It comes out because it's stretching for light, you know but it's so spindly and it makes me extremely nervous. And then in one video over a year ago, this one here dropped a limb 20 feet away from me. This one makes me extremely nervous. I don't even want to use my fire pit in the winter because I'm so afraid of the limbs from this one. And this one actually has 
a couple dead limbs right here. It's hard to tell because there's a good limb over it, but there's dead limbs up there. It's hard to see on that silhouette, but um, and then there's some, you know, just like widow makers in there. And so anyhow, what I'm trying to say, long story short, is that um, we, we've been in, in indecision, but we are getting some doable quotes for having all the pines removed. And we've already been praying about it, and I think we're in agreement finally that we're just going to pull all of the pines out. We're going to leave all the oaks, but we're going to pull all the pines out. And um, of course, we thought about doing pulling the four worst out, leaving the other four. But then if we do that, some of the other four are there on the far side. And then I still have to keep all this lane open and I still have to be careful and then I have to worry about that neighbor's roof and you know it's hurricane season uh, there's a lot of factors that go into it and and I do I mean it's such a conservationist and Jack is too and we just you know we want housing for the animals and we want to keep habitat and we want to have a really nice multi multi-layer food forest but I can't get my nut and in some of the bigger larger um, mangoes and then I have two really large apple trees I mean we're talking 25 30 feet high I can't get in the ground until we make space and those are a lot more doable in a hurricane they're a lot safer for me walking around than these 85 foot pines and so literally we've been almost sick to her stomach trying trying to well i have i don't know about jack but just you know we want to do it do we want to spend the money should we spend the money in this economy and you know do we do climbers do we do buckets some guys do a combination of both there's just i'm telling you we've been thoroughly exhausted by the research and we are gonna pull the trees out. I am not the oaks, not the pretty oaks. We're gonna clean all that up. We're gonna lift the canopy on the front and I'll be able to use South Garden again starting this fall. We'll put all the lettuces back there and the kales and everything. But I, I've been working off of three gardens and that's not the main decision maker. I mean, we're living just fine off of three gardens versus four, but whew, I mean, we need to do this. We need to just make the leap. It's gonna hurt in a couple ways, <laughs> but you see them swaying, I'm over it. I am really over risking my life getting to the chickens, getting the gardens. We wanna have this beautiful fruit and nut tree forest. And we just feel like the pines are, are holding us back from the final phase. And, uh, and I love them and the, the hawks, hawks are there, but the hawks will also go to the oak trees. The hawks love all the oaks in the other neighbor's yard. We have that and uh, this yard, this other neighbor. Um, so that's my biggest update for you in this um, garden tour video is our landscape is gonna change. And I'm a little concerned about when the frost and the cold weather comes. Am I going to lose that frost protection? And I might. And um, that might just be the price I have to pay. Uh, I still have that oak that does provide a lot of protection. These oaks do too. And that might help, you know, through some of the frost nights. But, you know, in the end, it's just going to happen. It's just... Um, if you have something negative to say, probably now is not the good time to say it to me because I literally have been worried sick for days on should we do it, should we not. And, and I mean, I argued with Jack, but in the end, you know, and I'm having to come out here to put the chickens to bed, wake the chickens up in the morning. And we've been having this tropical thing coming in off the Atlantic. And I was like, 
You know, I am really tired of worrying. I It's really stressful to come out here and not know if another limb's gonna drop 20 feet from me or on me. And um, we've had them drop on the coop roof as well. Th that one wasn't as big, but anyhow, we're just gonna go ahead and do it. And you should see it. Some guys, depending on the person we get, some think we'll, they'll be out here within a week or two. So you may see it really soon. Oh, also before I leave this, let me turn you around. And uh, you see this arch of the, it's a very heavy limb right there off this oak tree. And um, with permission from my, my wonderful neighbor, I love this lady over here. Uh, we're gonna take this limb as well, just like right up in here. Not all, maybe a couple. I'm not sure if we can do it in one good cut or I'm sure we won't do it in one cut, but you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not, not sure if one main limb does it or two, but uh, we're gonna just lift some of the weight right, right off of here. This whole little section right here is gonna be lifted and this little section is gonna be lifted because as you see, they're coming down. They're only like maybe 11 feet from the ground, 10 feet from the ground. Yeah, that's, it's getting really bad. And over here, this, this, um, this whole section is coming off, but we're going to leave a good bit of this and this and, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly <laughs> everything. I know we have to get it off the house um, roof and away off of this power line. It is touching the power line a little. We're gonna clean up the trunk of this one. And there is one branch. Oh, you can see it right here going over. Um, that's actually over the house as well as the boat barn. And so they'll take that one, but they'll leave the rest of that canopy. So have I talked your ears off enough? Maybe we'll just leave it at that and I'll just do some more garden touring later. But I felt like it was really important. It's going to be a huge change. You guys are going to definitely notice it. And um, our landscape is going to change once again. And I, it's always bittersweet. But the bitter part is it's it'll be gone. The sweet will be that. We're getting fruit and nut trees. Jack wants a big mango, and I definitely want nut trees. Um, at least two nut trees in here. So if you have really good recommendations on nut trees, let me know. I would love to hear your ideas and thoughts about that in the comments below. And with that, I think this video is too long. <laughs> Let's leave it there. So you guys, there'll be another one, a part two coming, okay? And we'll talk more about all the well, there's not that much to talk about, but there's some fruit and fruit and vine stuff going on. So you guys with that, take care. God bless. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.